Hello, my name's Sarah and I'm from Thrive. Thrive was designed to look and feel like a coffee shop, but in fact, Thrive is a safe space for support workers, outreach workers, and social workers to meet with young people they care for. Young people who are care experienced young people, or maybe young people in the justice system. The space offers the opportunity for support workers to build rapport, offer services, and share good practice. At Thrive, we also offer intensive job search support. And actually, if you're a young person, you can attend Thrive as an alternative to your local job centre. Pop in, grab a coffee, and we're there to help you. We believe all young people have the right to live happy, safe, and fulfilling lives. To show just how important our work is, we'd love you to listen to Adam's story. Adam, tell me about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I got an apprenticeship. Two weeks ago, I moved flat. And two weeks ago, I was bought trainers, trousers, a jumper and a coat. Two weeks ago, my life changed direction. Two weeks ago, my new life began. Hi. My name is Adam and until two weeks ago, I was a kid in care. A kid living in an apartment in the middle of nowhere. No friends, no hope, no care in care. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sorry for myself. I hate that in people, I hate self-pity and always have. I leave that to my older brother and my mother. I just became resigned to the fact that that was how my life was going to be. I like the idea of Thrive. Supporting young people in care into employment felt like the right thing to do. And then as soon as I met Adam, I knew that we would both benefit from the mentoring process. I remember the day I first went into care. My mum rang me on the way home from school and told me she couldn't cope anymore that I wasn't to come home and that I was to go back to school where there was a social worker waiting for me. She had abandoned me. I never went back home again. At the age of 13, I went into care with all the stigma that came with it. Don't get me wrong, I felt safer than I have for six years. Safe from my mother's neglect. My younger brother's daily physical and emotional abuse. And my older brother's self-obsession. I felt drained. But I also felt relief. Don't get me wrong. Heartbroken. Adam and I first met in November 2020. And the Thrive team did a great job at guiding me through our first meeting. If I had been nervous, and needn't have been. The conversation just flowed. Adam was so articulate and engaging. And he was really honest about his life experiences. My mum had been the world to me until my kid brother started to act out. She couldn't cope with them, so she relied on me to cope for it, and I let her. While she drank, I cared for him, washed him, fed him, was hit by him, shouted at by him. When I'd fall asleep, mum would prod me to wake up and look after him. I hated him and I grew to hate her. I felt invisible, I was really low and I thought, if no one is seeing me, why be here at all? That's when I tried to jump off the top balcony in school. My friends stopped me just in time, but I felt guilty that I put them through it. They stopped being friends after that and I don't blame them, 
Suicide isn't easy to talk about or deal with, is it? I can't remember much about my life after that. But I remember my mum visiting me once when I was in hospital and calling me a lifeless bag of bones. I was in the mental health system, but that's all a bit of a blur too, and I don't know why, perhaps it was the medication I was on that left me with this feeling of darkness and numbness that's still with me to this day. I've just learned to live with it, cope with it, hide inside my head. That's what I do best. The staff at the children's home were very kind to me. But the other kids weren't. They thought I was a snob and that I felt I was better than them, which wasn't true. I just didn't know how to connect. So I was bullied for three and a half years, coping with what I'd learnt, accept and keep it all inside. I can't remember any teachers, social workers or counsellors. They came into my life and went. No one seemed to know what to do with me. I was odd because I came from a middle class family. I had a successful mum who would only put me in care and kept their other two boys at home. How did that look? It must have been something I did that made her do that, mustn't it? They never seen it as neglectful, negative or emotionally abusive. They never found out she used me as an outlet to vent all her frustration and anger. She was a successful adult, clever and manipulative. So it was easy for them to see me as the problem, wasn't it? Throughout our one-to-ones, Adam's openness and honesty blew me away. His self-awareness and resilience was impressive for a young person his age. He knew exactly what he wanted. He had ambition. He just needed a bit of adult support and professional advice. And that's exactly where I felt I came in. My last care placement was the best. It was good there. I was coddled, I was looked after, I felt cared for. It was very laid back, very few expectations of me, in a good way. No pressure to be or do anything. I could start being myself again. The staff also seemed to like me. They talked to me and they listened to me. I felt physically and mentally cared for. That felt good. Even better, I started to think of a future. I liked doing practical things, so I thought a trade would be the best option for me. So I found an electrical engineering course. But you know what? I studied for two years only to find out that there was no proper qualifications at the end of it. I felt stupid, but now, now I have guidance and proper advice. Back then, I only had people who cared for my well-being and not my ambition. So, why am I telling you all of this? Because in care, you feel either pitied or looked down upon. You're not expected to be ambitious or aspirational. But I was, and I am. My company recruits a lot of apprentices across all different trades, but finding the right attitude and qualities can be hard. Adam has drive, discipline and ambition. He even found himself a college course. And although it didn't end up being the college course for him, this just reaffirms that the Thrive Mentorship Programme is critical it's never too late to enable someone to get back on the right path. Going to Thrive was brilliant. In November, I got my mentor, having one-to-one -one meetings, being able to ask questions, having questions to answer, someone being really interested in me. That felt good. 
and I was really interested in Adam. He inspired me as a mentee, but it also became really clear that he'd be a really good fit for my company as an apprentice. So we started the application and the interview process. With Thrive support and his own ability, Adam passed with flying colours. And he began his electrical apprenticeship with us in March 2021. I have to admit, before I did the mentoring programme, I had my own preconceived ideas about young people in care. My own unconscious bias as I now know it as. But all of that has been well and truly challenged by Adam. I know that this is going to be hard for him. He has a lot to deal with, to process his past, his family, finding his place in the world. And I am under no illusion that he's going to have his doubts and his challenges. But I have full confidence in Thrive in helping him and me. Look, we're all on this journey together now. And if and when the road gets tough, Adam doesn't have to be alone anymore. When the boss told us that we were getting a new apprentice, that was okay. I like working with apprentices. And then I found out that this lad who was coming had been in care. And I thought, what's she on now? Look, I went to school with a couple of lads who'd been in care and they were always completely out of control. Always going AWOL, always bunking off and always getting into all sorts of trouble. I mean, don't get me wrong, I felt dead sorry for them because they didn't have anybody to keep them in line, did they? Like my mum and dad, they got on me nerves. They were always getting on me case, telling me what I could and couldn't do. But now that I've got a son of my own, I realise how important it is to be a good parent. These lads that I'm talking about, they didn't have any of that. So that's why they turned out the way that they did. They didn't see the point in working or, or striving for anything. So they didn't bother. And then I met Adam. And to be honest, I was surprised by him the moment I saw him. I mean, he was dead smart. You know, like well turned out and so polite. I actually thought the boss had sent the wrong person in at first. But you could tell he was a genuine, nice fella. And he was really interested in what we did. And he'd done his homework on us as well. But he talked about the electrician course that he'd done. And how upset he was that he couldn't use any of it towards his apprenticeship. He also told me about being in care. Very open and honest about that. And the challenges that that presented him with. It was when he said... But it wasn't all bad. There were some good times. <laughs> it stopped me in my tracks. And I'll be honest. I got a little bit emotional. <sighs> I was blown away by him. I mean, despite everything that this lad had been through. He still managed to see his way through school. Through college. And get himself to a place where he could be helped and supported. I mean, he wasn't given everything on a plate and he didn't ask for anything other than to be given a chance. His references from college, they were glowing, saying how punctual, reliable, dedicated and hard-working he was. I've got a younger brother. He can just about get himself out of bed in the morning. I mean, he relies on my mum and dad for absolutely everything. And he is this lad with no family to support him in any way. He's living on his own, so he's got to do everything, and I mean everything, for himself. I take my hat off to him, I really do. And I hope this doesn't sound cheesy, but I became determined to help him in any way that I could. And I was proud of our place as well, you know, for giving him the opportunity. But then I thought, no, actually, it's not like they're being charitable. They've got themselves a really, really good apprentice the best person for the job. On the way out of the first time I met Adam, he said to me, he said, thanks very much, Jack. I really appreciate it. And then he said, I feel really lucky. Things like this don't happen to people like me. And I looked at him as he walked out the door and I thought, you know what? They do now, mate. 
they do now. Two weeks ago, I got an apprenticeship. Two weeks ago, I moved flat. Two weeks ago, I was bought trainers, trousers, a jumper, and a coat. Two weeks ago, my life changed direction. Two weeks ago, my new life began. Thank you to those people who have made it possible. You know who you are. We were introduced to Adam on his 18th birthday. Adam came to us, he received a birthday card. We, we got him some cake, we got him a little gift. Adam's accessed our services for probably four months now. And the progress he's made, is, it's just been fantastic. And we're really proud of him because he's done it himself. All we had to do was give him a, a little bit of support and he's shaping his own future. And now we're asking you to join us to help us and to help all the Adams out there. Because actually since we opened, we've had 372 Adams through our doors. During 2020, 1,344 young people exited the care system in Liverpool City region alone. 43% of those young people are currently not in education, training or employment. This is compared to a national average of 11%. Our young people need our help. If you're an employer across Liverpool City region, become an ambassador. Come down, have a coffee. We'll tell you what we do, get involved, and together we can really make a difference. Young people of the future, they're your employees. Together, Let's support our young people in helping them to live the lives they want to live and reach their aspirations. <laughs>